Kanye West is running for president, and during a speech, he made some fairly outlandish comments and tendered some fairly, well, out of touch social media messages. And it brought into question his mental health. Last week, his wife, Kim Kardashian, posted a statement on Instagram asking fans for compassion as she addressed West's bipolar disorder diagnosis. And she wrote in part, anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. And we as a society talk about giving grace to the issue of mental health as a whole. However, we should also give it to the individuals who are living with it in times when they need it the most. Joining me now on The Morning Show to talk about what it means to live with bipolar disorder, Dr. Merrick Hirsch, a board-certified psychiatrist with Memorial Hospital. Appreciate you being here. Good when morning. When you talk about bipolar disorder, there are different types of the disorder. So let's start with some basic definitions. Well, um, really, we have bipolar disorder and bipolar 2 disorder. So bipolar disorder is sort of the most extreme form where someone might end up hospitalized, where they have manic episodes that <clears throat> are so beyond their uh, control that they're uh, quite dysfunctional. They might be paranoid, uh, suspicious of things going on around them, delusional. Um, and that's really the extreme form. They might also have, because we call it bipolar, meaning two uh, two polar opposites in terms of their mood. So they might go from a manic state to a very depressed state. They can be very impulsive. They might become suicidal. Um, the other type would be bipolar 2 disorder, which is a more functional type of bipolar disorder where you might avoid hospitalization and maybe operate at what we call a hypomanic state where you're very productive, you don't need as much sleep, uh, very focused, uh, maybe a little grandiose, but not so far outside the norm that uh, you'd require serious uh, mental health interventions. And as I understand it, people can live pretty much symptom-free in a typical baseline mood but during a manic or depressive phase, things change. So what triggers that change? Uh, well, certainly stressful events in life can trigger a change. I think with Kanye West, he cites the death of his mother as being a very stressful event. I believe he was also in a car crash a number of years ago that triggered uh, a, a manic episode. Uh, so he seems to operate at a fairly high level in terms of his functionality. He is a famous musician. He's a very wealthy guy. Uh, he's done a lot in his life, but sometimes things can go over the top to where you are out of control of your emotions. You're volatile. You're impulsive. You're doing things that you really would regret and that are very concerning to the ones around you who love you and care about you. Any telling how long these episodes can last? Uh, it really varies. It depends on the intervention that's provided. So a person in a manic episode uh, could last days, weeks, or months uh, if they're not treated. But we do have very effective treatments, uh, whether it's through medication, uh, certainly containment at a locked uh, psychiatric facility is helpful. Electroconvulsive therapy is a uh, very helpful treatment. It's hard to get people who are manic into treatment, though, because they often enjoy their manic phase. So I think that's something that his wife, Kim Kardashian, is probably struggling with, and the rest of their family is trying to get a person who is so high, so elevated, and doesn't have the insight to recognize that there's a, a big problem um, that they don't want the help, they don't want the treatment, they want to stay like that. So it can be very frustrating for family members. So how do you reach those patients in a manic phase? Uh, well, often, uh, unfortunately, it does come down to an involuntary commitment to the hospital. So here in Florida, we, of course, have the Baker Act, and every, every state in the country does have their own version of the Baker Act. They do vary slightly state to state. For the most part, they're all 72-hour commitments, and that's a great way to get a person in the door. Of course, then, uh, beyond that 72 hours, if the person is still so ill that they can't be released into the community safely, then we as psychiatrists can petition a court uh, to have them uh, committed longer, and then it does just take a lot of uh, time and effort to work with their families and work with the patient to try and get them on board with recovery and treatment. So when they're experiencing the illness, when they're in that phase, do they realize the severity of that illness? And when they come out, do they realize what has happened? Um, well, there uh, often aren't so much in the way of memory impairments. Sometimes people are so delusional and paranoid um, that uh, they might have a, a lapse in uh, memory, but um, they often uh, can come out on the other side feeling well. It's just a matter of adherence to the treatment. Dr. Hirsch, appreciate you uh, uh, giving us some insight into bipolar disorder. Appreciate your time. Sure thing.